Hello everyone and welcome back to our UE5 AI tutorial series where we're covering everything to do with AI inside of our Unreal Engine 5. In the previous episode we started work on using EQS to make our AI find cover, but this is only half of the equation. Our AI will now need to pop out of cover to take their attacks at the player character. So in this episode we're going to do just that. So let's get started. Okay, so last time we did our cover AI where they all find cover and crouch behind it. But that's only half the equation when you're working on cover for AI to shoot back at you. You want them to be able to pop out of cover, shoot, 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 go back into cover. So let's talk about how that process would work. So at the moment, we've got this behavior. They'll go into cover and crouch. Now, at the moment, they're just walking around and we'll find cover accordingly. But we want them to say, whilst they're waiting behind there, get impatient, pop out, shoot, 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 pop back in. So let's go through that process. First of all, we need to set up the attacking animation or attacking action of our character. So we're gonna go into our character's um, blueprint and we set up these combat interface functions last time and we've got the event attack. Now on the event attack, we need to tell our character to get into a line of sight of the character, of the player. So they want to be able to see the player and do what they need to do. So what we need to do is to calculate which uh, EQS we're going to use to pop into and out of cover. So let's go into creating a new EQS. And AI, from a query, EQS, um, find attack so this find attack is for them to find a position that they want to use to attack the player character in and this works very similar to what we've done last time so we're going to do another grid and this time though the post projection vertical offset we're actually going to rise above our crouched cover so if i put it as a hundred for example our cover points will now go above the world here so if i change this over here to use find attack you can see they, these are now high enough to be determined but well, should be hopefully we'll double check uh that they should go over the top of our cover points here but um, i might actually raise up a little bit more let's change it to 120 there we go okay there we go so that's our cover points being worked out there. Now, with our cover points, the reason why I'm raising up this higher is because let's say we've got cover that is flat like this, but we've also got cover which is tall. So if I were to make this like a column, for example, they would either pop, if they're below low cover, they'll pop their heads up by standing up and attacking. Otherwise, they'll step out of cover and shoot. Okay, so they've got to move either way to shoot and pop out. So let's go ahead and use that to determine where it can find a place to attack the player. So I'm going to right click on here and add a test for trace. And we're going to do trace here and we'll do uh, filter only. And we're going to choose the context to be our player character. And we want it to not ball match. So turn that off. And that means it requires to hit the context. Okay, it must make clear pattern for that. So if I were to push play on here and do the uh, debug on our pawn here, the testing pawn, you can see that it's filtered out the ones that can't see me. Okay, it couldn't see me back here. But these ones can. So that's all good. That's exactly what we want. So what we now need to do is tell it to score them. And what we're going to do is simply just look at distance. So we right click, add test for distance. Distance to the query. And we'll choose the scoring equation to be inverse linear that way it'll pick the ones that are closest to it and changes the score only okay hit save and close that so now that's going to pick our points based upon which one's closest to it so if it's behind here for example let's just move this behind the column here you can see it's going to pick the one left or right to it but over here, it could pick the one that is already on because this one is technically visible to the player. So it would pick this one and just stand up and attack. So that's how that's going to work. So what we need to do is when we do the find cover behavior here, I'm going to got a sequence doing this. 
and then I want to randomly tell it to attack. So on this sequence, we're going to drag out on this selector here, do another sequence. And this one, we're going to do an EQS. Choose our find attack and choose the key we want to use, target location. In this case, I want to use the single best item because I don't want it to walk too far away to do the attack. I want it to pick this. Obviously, feel free to change that if you wish and play back with that and see what effects you get. But it should be fine like this. And we'll do move to. And we'll do move to the target location. Okay, so that's going to be doing that. We're then going to take it to attack. So let's go into new task. And we'll do choose a BT task blueprint base. And we'll do this one as attack. And just like our cover one we did in the last episode, it's just a simple. We're going to receive, execute AI, take the controlled pawn, and run the attack code from the interface. Make sure you plug in the finish execute and tick the success box like that. And that is all there is on this one. So we compile, save that one and close that. And then from here, we can then do attack. Close this. And if I go now to my NPC's blueprint, and go to the attack blueprint here. The attack blueprint is now going to do whatever animations we want it to do, whatever shooting we want to do, uh, etc. All I'm going to do is here I'm going to do a print string. So print string like this and attacking like that. Okay. Now close that and that is it. So on our behavior tree, we've got, we've got these two sequences. Now the issue we've got is we're in this sequence here, and we're not going to leave this sequence at all. We have to basically abort this somehow to go into this tree. So what is going to be the condition for our character to decide they've had enough and want to attack now? So what we're going to do is use a simple timer that's going to be randomized after each attack. So on this sequence here, we're going to go onto our blackboard and add a new key and ball, and we'll do um is uh attacking okay save that go back to our behavior tree and on this first sequence we're going to right click and add a decorator and choose a blackboard decorator and we're going to use our key over here as is attacking and change it to is not set so if it's not attacking it will do this lot but if that uh, boolean gets changed it's going to go into this sequence here so i'm going to change this to abort both tracks here so ob observer aborts both so it changes they both end and it'll redo it basically um and then what i'm going to do is on this bt task attack is i'm going to on this finish before i finish execute is I'm going to do set blackboard value as ball. Actually, we'll do a timer here. Set timer by event for a random amount of seconds, actually. Do a random float in range. And we'll do between one and two seconds. In the event we're going to drag down here custom event um go back into cover we'll plug that into our set blackboard value as ball the key we're going to drag out and we're going to do make blackboard key selector and the key term the key name we're going to use sorry is attacking and we'll make it false and on the finish execute, now I'm going to put that at the end of this here. Okay. So I'll do that and it'll reevaluate and now go back to here. But we've still got the first one where it's got to decide whether it wants to attack. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into cover, is we're going to determine whether or not we're going to attack with a random amount. So we're going to do random ball with weight. 
Now, what this does is if we put in 0 0.5, that means there's a 50% chance of it being true. If I put in 0 0.25, that means I've got 25% of it being, tr uh, being true. So I'm going to leave it at 0 0.25, put that to a branch, and plug that there. The finish execute here will go into false. But on true here, we want to change that blackboard key. So I'm going to do set blackboard key value as bool. And the key we're going to do is make blackboard key selector. And type in the name is attacking. And tick the box. Don't forget you'll need another finish execute at the end of this branch as well. So it can leave this task here. Okay, so let's take a look at this in action. Okay, so hit play, and it goes into cover. He's poking his head out of cover and attacking me with those points there. Now, obviously, it's going to cover for not very long. I'm going to take it to wait for a little bit longer there, and that's where that wait node was coming in earlier. So let's go back to our find cover here, and I'm putting that wait back on. Wait. And we'll do three, round deviation of two. And hit play. So, waiting cover. And he should walk out of cover in a second and go to shoot us. There you go. Goes back into cover. So, when he's behind short cover, he'll stand up. So that would be the best spot for him to take a shot at us. Um, and, but when he's behind a pillar, he will step out, which is what he just did when he was behind this one. Okay. Now, at the moment, he's not facing us, but that's easily fixed. What we're going to do is go into our behavior tree. And when they go to attack here, before we do that, we're going to rotate to face BB entry. And we want to face towards our target actor. So with that down there, the issue we're going to have is when he crouches behind us, he's going to lose sight of us. So he needs to remember our target actor and who they're attacking. So in this case, we go into his AI uh, controller here. Let's go down to his handle sight sense. And let's just turn off our object value here to not pick anything once it's been set. So once it's been changed here, it's not going to ever change back. So I'll just change that back to resort into both of them. So once he's seen me, that's it, he's locked onto me, he won't lose sight of me, which is more accurate to them um, attacking you in, in a combat scenario. Okay. So there he is. And attack him. Um, looks like the screen messages aren't working, so enable messages, all screen messages. There you go, attacking, attacking. Uh, attacking okay um and let's just go back to uh our behavior tree go back to my enter cover and my weighted here i'm gonna put back to 0.25 i changed it to one while testing this out uh i put back to 25 percent he will now wait patiently and then take his chance there you go And obviously, the more you space out these eQuest testing points, um, the further he could possibly travel. So, for example, if I go to this find attack and change the generation here from every 100 to every um, 200, the points are now further apart. So what that will mean is that he'll poke out further away from where he is. Like that, see? Which is probably going to be a bit more accurate to what you want to see in your game if you want them to start attacking that you and then if i run around here he's still in that waiting mode um but he should now when he pops up he should turn around and attack me here again 25 percent chance of waiting so we'll see what he does
There you go. Perfect. And there you go. A simple cover system for our AI. And there you go. We've got our UE5 character running around, hiding into cover, popping out, taking shots at us. And as you can see, there's lots of things you can configure and change and tweak to get exactly kind of combat cover that you want your AI to be taking. Now, in the next episode, we're going to continue on in the AI tool set and take a, start taking a look at smart objects. Smart objects are a really cool new feature in UE5, and I can't wait to go through and show you what you can do with them. You can watch that next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTubers for their continued support. And like always, make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.